Hello, my lovely art friends. It's Kelly Folsom here, and I wanna welcome you back to another Vital Art Session. In today's lesson, we are going to be painting a subject matter that I would have been terrified to paint as a beginning artist. And what it is, of course, is flowers. I remember being so afraid to paint flowers and I would avoid them and avoid them forever. <laughs> so I want to let you know that Vital Art Sessions is made not only for beginners but to advanced artists. And I also believe now as a mature artist that even if you're a beginner, you should attempt to do things that you feel are scary for you or feel are out of your comfort zone. So you should always be stretching yourself. And I also feel like for even professional artists, we need to always be also going back and going back to the fundamentals and going back to the basics um, to keep all of our skills sharp and fresh and new. So in Vital Art Sessions, um, every single month you're going to see a big combination of lessons from uh, perhaps a very simple subject matter, maybe one or two objects or just one kind of objects, to something more complex like a bouquet of flowers. So without further ado, let's dive in and get started. All right, so we um, are going to dive into this beautiful arrangement of these really beautiful violet, sort of red violet uh, flowers. I think these are, they were called spider palms, but basically they're some form of uh, chrysanthemum, I think. So I have purposefully sized down to a six by six so that I can try to walk you through uh, more of the finishing stages of this in our short time together. So I'm going to go ahead and of course do my thirds again here. Um, and that's almost even more important the more you size down um, because the tendency with a smaller canvas is that we we maybe fill the entire um, canvas. So we still want to treat this like any other uh, composition. All right. And so again, just to remind you, you know, I have been, um, if you're scared of painting flowers, I have definitely been in your shoes. And so I think it's always best to start before you feel like you're ready and just prepare, you know, you kind of hope for the best and prepare for, for the worst. Sometimes you might surprise yourself and do a lot better than what you thought because you were just kind of making a mountain out of a molehill or building it up in your mind, you know. Um, and other times it might be just as bad as you expected, you know. I have been there and this is painting and you know, it's no easy, um, painting is not easy. Uh, and and it's, it's definitely, you know, not just some like, oh, look at me, I could just paint everything and anything so fast. And, <laughs> you know, so um, just to understand that that's the nature of painting and that we all have to go through it. We all have to go through that learning process and that learning stage. Okay, so because the, gla the glass is glass and transparent, I'm going to put down a tone of burnt umber and some cobalt blue here. If you don't have cobalt, you can just use ultra, ultramarine. I'm actually out of ultramarine and that's why I'm subbing cobalt this month until I can get my supplies in. But basically, I wanna get in these darker values that are in the background. Um, some of these cast shadows back here that kind of help frame out the bouquet. And then I can, you know, this, this side of the background is all light against dark of the flowers. Now I've already kind of starting my flowers up really high there. And so I'm going to drop them back down here. And I'm just looking for like an overarching, let's say an arch or an overarching line here that would describe, you know, from the furthest flower out here by itself to these two flowers together here. And then of course we have glass in the middle. We've got a lot of dark here in this part of the glass with all of the, uh, the leaves and the foliage. And then we get our light part of the glass here. I'm actually, you know what, I think I'm gonna move this light box back just because I kind of don't really want that much, this much shadow on the right hand side. 
I want it to be like a lighter value, I think. So keep in mind if you're setting up your own still lifes, you know, where you have that shadow box, mine is just a black project board that any uh, elementary school student would buy for a science project. Um, but if it's closer up to your objects, it's going to cast a shadow um, onto the both sides. You know, if we're, if we're using this side, positioning the light so that this side falls into shadow, uh, but then we have the light blocker pulled up, then that right hand side is going to be in shadow too. So you'll just need to know that in case you're setting up your own still lifes. Um, in case you want to, you know, you want to decide, do I want shadow there or not? So I'm going through, I'm looking for all these basic areas of where shadow shapes are. We have cast shadow on the white cloth here. Now the front edge of the white cloth might be like here, let's say. Um, good, I think that's good. Okay, and I'm just estimating, like obviously none of these shapes are entirely correct. I'm just looking for big connected masses, um, simplifying and joining things together as much as possible. Um, I don't want to get into leaves and all that yet because there is really no point. Okay, um, I'm just going to block in some, some really thin umber here just for the dark flowers um, right here. I'm not going to put it down too thick because I want that color to be clean once I get there. Okay, and then we get this one over here, which this side's kind of a dark against light, and then the left side is sort of light against dark of the cast shadow. Okay, so this is always the process that I go through or the sequence. You know, tone, size and placement, look for your major shadow shapes or dark accents, and wipe out for any of the really big shapes of light. You know, uh, sometimes I might put something in to get a feeling of, you know, what's that going to add to the picture here, but it might be painted over uh, eventually. Okay, so um, the next thing I would like to do is get some of this really beautiful sort of cool gray. I thought this painting would be fun because there's um, just so many beautiful cool tones here. And dipping into my liquid here, so black, cobalt, and white. We get this really beautiful, you know, kind of icy, cool gray. And I think that's going to be so lovely against those purples and against those um, you know, greens that are in the picture as well. You know, if you, we do have some yellow green in the foliage, which is going to add a little flavor of that warm versus cool and a little bit of complementary color. If you wanted to set something up like this and um, go even further with the uh, complementary color, you could throw in something like, a, you know, a lemon. Uh, might be nice, or if you had some yellow flowers that you wanted to, yellow or ivory flowers that you wanted to mix in with your bouquet. All right, so I want enough of this paint down to get started with, but it doesn't have to be, you know, super, super thick. And as I'm working around things, you know, I know that this is not exact drawing yet, right? That's okay. That's just the stage of this painting. I'm painting over edges, I'm going to bring it back later on, um, and then I know that I've got this really brilliant white up here that's just straight white for now, and some cobalt in here, and then as we come off the front plane of the table we might have, and I don't want a really sharp edge there because this is cloth, and I want my strokes to go perpendicular up and down here with this plane and then horizontal with this plane, up and down with this plane. So always think about the kind of plane that you are, the direction of the surface that you're actually painting there. And then going back to our, our first lesson in January, we know that if we do orange with say a blue, we're going to you know get kind of a neutral gray as well. So maybe for some of this pattern, depending on how much we would want to do there. Uh, but this plane is getting less light down here 
And so I don't really want to just paint full white all over it. Okay. And I'm just trying to get the big passages of values established. So, and then you never really want a, a really hard edge line back here in the background um, on your horizon line there or where your table edge meets the wall. And then I'm going to use some more cobalt blue and black and some medium because I do have white in this mixture just to get a little thinner and kind of mix in over top of this burnt umber. And maybe actually a little more burnt umber in there just to neutralize. Anything that gets too blue is actually going to come forward to the eye. Again, don't worry about painting over anything. We actually want to do that. We'll bring all that back here in a little bit. Um, okay. Now, for glass, um, since the cloth is so white, this glass is actually kind of darker in value than the cloth, and so, but it's lighter than this background over here. So you want to look in two spots for the accurate value um, assessment. And um, I'm, I'm more in favor of a ballpark assessment, right? Like I'm not, I'm not a fan of, oh, okay, break out your, break out your value chart and, you know, make sure you match exactly perfectly what that value is there. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that, okay? But we do know that this, where this edge meets the background, needs to be lighter and then where this edge meets the tabletop plane needs to be darker. So, you know, I mean, that being said, you can make this a little lighter, make this a little darker. No one will ever be, the, no one will ever know. But the thing about glass is that it's really just a repetition of, uh, uh, you know, it's a modification and repetition of whatever is behind it or whatever we're seeing through, especially clear glass. You know, colored glass, that kind of gets a little different because it takes on a lot of the uh, local value of that, that local color. And I'm starting broad, right? Just broad, simple masses and shapes. Um, and we're gonna uh, start to hone in and focus in on the areas that need more focus. But in the beginning, you want to start with really simple, big shapes, okay? And then we've got some, some darker greens in here. I'm going to use some black, some blue, and some cad orange, or cad yellow deep, whichever one you have. And, because that's a little too blue, I don't mind some of that blue. Take your time. And you could almost do this like, almost like a blind, uh, not blind drawing, but you know those drawings that you do where you don't lift the, don't lift the brush from the, the pencil from the surface. You could kind of try to do that with this to try to get a, a good silhouette abstract shape instead of thinking about it in terms of pieces. You know, so we just kind of want this, this um, fun abstract shape. Okay, so I'm seeing some lighter greens in there, a little bit lighter. I'm going to grab some Cad Lemon to bring in uh, a notch, just one notch lighter. It would kind of be like playing playing uh, from a, a C to an E on the piano or something. Um, you know, just a, a step above lighter. It doesn't have to, I don't want it to be too dramatic because it's in the glass and I want it to stay in the glass. Um, all those stems are part of this unit of the glass. Okay, now I'm seeing a little warmth on the water there. This is also good practice for painting a clear glass, obviously, and water. And so once I get the inside of the stems, I can get some suggestion of, let's say, where the water's edge is. And I just want to look to see where does that show up, perhaps the most clear in that base and, and it's like it's almost like it's a highlight but again compare it to the actual highlight it's a little softer a little more subtle so for example if this let's say is highlight 
okay, which might be a good highlight, then, you know, that um, little, little subordinate light here is a little bit softer. And then some of it kind of shows up on the back edge as well. And then as with all clear things, transparent things, light's going to pass through it. So over here on the right hand side, so there's no real shadow shape in this case. So this is transmitted light. This is say this is highlight or surface light. So you have to know the difference between your different kinds of lights that you're painting and um, well, just how you paint them differently. So uh, highlight or, or surface light is much more opaque and a more dramatic value contrast from what it's around and transmitted light is warmer almost like a reflected light and is not as dramatic as say highlight so it's kind of like understanding the difference too between different types of shadows between your form shadow and your uh, cast shadows cast shadows being much more sharp edged and dramatic so I'm just trying to kind of pinch this in, reshape this, the, the pedestal here. And then I'm getting some little folds of light down here, which would, is going to have maybe some more little crisp edges of, of light. That, that'll be nice to indicate little folds in the drapery. Uh, we don't have any major massive folds here, but and again, you want this transition over the edge to be kind of soft. So perhaps come back with an in-between color and kind of soften into this. I'm just going to paint through this because it's going to be so much easier to paint that foliage on top. All right. Now, uh, just to get this a little more symmetrical here kind of carving in with the background and we are getting glow we are getting some glow on that um, opposite side on the cast shadow on the tabletop plane and I, I totally lost all of my shadows cast shadows cast shadows are like the first thing that tend to just somehow magically disappear while you're painting wet into wet <laughs> I don't know how it, it just happens. I'm telling you, you put them in in the very beginning and then, you know, 20 minutes into the painting, it's like, where did all those cast shadows I put in go? So it's no big deal to have to restate them. This is pretty common, um, paint, especially painting wet into wet. Um, okay, so now, yeah, we get to go up to the flowers. Woohoo! Or, oh God, no, <laughs> whatever your, your biological response is in the moment and uh, fear and excitement are uh, sort of two sides of the same coin, I think. Okay, so I'm just using some straight alizarin right now just to get the mass. And now I can see, oh my goodness gracious, look how I place that lower and it's actually higher. So, you know what, no biggie, no biggie at all. We'll just scooch it on up there and then we'll use background color. Uh, you know, I think that's important to, to show you, like, it, just the, the, the less that you beat yourself up for stuff, right? Like, all my, the less that you're looking for proof that you're just not a good artist, I think you'll actually paint better if you can, um, that's if you have that bad habit. Some, some people are fortunate enough to not have that bad habit. But I do remember in the beginning, you know, just taking any little misjudgment as a sign, you know, <laughs> as a sign that uh, maybe I'm just not cut out for this. And that is just a, a little fib uh, that, that something inside of you is telling you. So don't listen to it. Okay. Um, you'll just get better and you know what even after you know you become a pro you're gonna do things like that so it's just a part of the part of the gig 
man. <laughs> I felt like all of a sudden I was talking like a hippie or something. Like, hey man, it's just part of the gig or something. I don't know. Um, okay, so just bringing in background color. Kind of carve back into this. What you're going to have to be really careful about is, for example, when I do things like that, maybe I pick up some alizarin, right? And alizarin is one of those colors that it's like it just seems to want to go all over the place. It's like, look at me, I'll go everywhere, I will ruin everything. <laughs> So you will have to be, you know, vigilant about um, wiping off your brush. And now I'm going to just kind of restate this glass. Wiping off your brush whenever you know that you've picked up some um, alizarin. And of course that's the key word, right? When you know that you've picked up some alizarin. So don't feel bad if in the beginning, if you cannot keep track of all of that. It's just a lot, it's a lot to keep track of, I'm telling you. Um, over time you can, uh, it's like you start to subconsciously be able to record what you just did on your brush, you know, um, without having to think about it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna start getting in just a few little pieces of light on the, these petals, adding some white. Look how beautiful that alizarin goes, just, just with a few little touches of white. I'm gonna turn my brush to the side. So important with these flowers that you do start with the dark and then build up to the light because, um, you know, that way we don't lose our depth and our darks. And the overall value of this flower is a dark value. So if I squint my eyes, you know, I'm going to be able to see that a little more clearly. Now, I'm going to kind of mass in. And I think it's important, let's look at the overall shape. You know, they're almost like these little triangle shapes in profile. Um, here we get, we can see that, okay, it's really the circular form and all these petals are radiating around that circular um, axis. And when we see a flower in profile, it almost starts to look, you know, kind of like a wedge here, wedge-like shape. And again, don't, don't be too concerned about um, getting specific petals right now. We're just looking for the general uh, size and placement here. And then I think what I'm going to do actually is just kind of flatten all this out together because it's going to be so much easier to paint that eucalyptus on top. So just going to basically kind of create a, um, a blank background here or a flat background so that I can do those green leaves on top. Alrighty, so now let's get to some of those leaves and um, I'm stalling to give myself some some time for hopefully some of the uh, alizarin here to set up. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to set up too much in just, you know, 20 minutes or so, but um, every little bit helps because oil paint when it's fresh out of the tube is super you know, juicy and gooey, and of course it's gorgeous, but it's, it's hard to get finer detail on it when it's that wet. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna get in some of these accents of the green eucalyptus leaves. I thought these leaves were, I mean, they're eucalyptus leaves, but they're, I thought they were different and interesting. Um, kind of a softer, paler color and even a different shape. So I'm going to look here, here's kind of my brightest one, and it is closest to the center of action here, close to the, the uh, highlight. You know, if you want it, sometimes what I'll do is I'll use the back of my brush so I can get an overall sense of the gesture of the whole stem and spine. 
of this, but I'm going to start first with this lighter one, really washing out um, a lot of the local color and getting some nice juicy paint on there. Um, and now that I'm doing that, I'm seeing, oh, okay, you know, we kind of need to uh, make that highlight a little, little more demure, perhaps. It's a little wild and wooly. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of the fun part, actually, about uh, all the Prima is that it's so easy to move, and oils that it's so easy to move all this paint around. Okay, now we've got um, some eucalyptus leaves that are getting a lot of transmitted light because I'm sitting on the shadow side to them. And so while they're lighter in value than the background, I'm actually going to put a lot of cadmium in it because light is actually, uh, you know, the leaves and petals are so thin. If you're sitting on that shadow side, you're actually going to see glow. And you know how I love my glow. And it's, I think, me always looking for glow, it's one of the reasons why people are always commenting on the fact that my paintings look so lit up because I'm looking for light. Where does light show up in everything? And what kind of light is it? So now I'm just going to use some of the, uh, just uh, get in some of these little, I guess they're seeds. That's going to add a nice little flavor. Something a little different color and a different shape. I'm going to make some of them kind of more mushy and vague, blending in, digging up the color underneath, and then like some of these a little more specific. All right, then we have some more eucalyptus leaves to deal with. Some of them um, have some cast shadows like this one back behind. There's a nice dark cast shadow here. And then we get some light again, but it's not quite as lit up, let's say, as the, one, the first one that I did. So keep in mind that cadmiums really make for a nice glowy, uh, you know, really good colors for shadows and reflected lights because they just have such a glow to them. So we get another leaf over here that's got that beautiful glow passing through it. And um, we want to get some cadmium on the back side of that. All right, I see another eucalyptus leaf up here. It actually is a dark against the light of the background. So I'm going to throw in some more uh, cobalt. And if, you know, if a little alizarin sneaks in there, even better because that's going to neutralize the green. Okay. And it's going back in space, back in space. And then, so I'm going to, with my brush, side to side, back in space, almost like if I was cross hatching. Okay. And then there's one little one sticking up here that we can barely see. And I think it would be fabulous to see it a little bit more here. It almost becomes the same, it's basically kind of the same value as the background, just a different color than the background. And of course that gives us some beautiful, we've got little peekaboos of petals back behind there as well. And uh, you'll see there's an artist I love so much who is a, uh, a, a Belgian, I'm trying to think, Flemish artist. Uh, can't remember now where he's from, but um, Franz, Franz Mortelmans. And you'll see a lot of times in his paintings how he puts leaves layered in between, um, in between flowers to give some depth and, you know, I think to make the flowers so much easier to paint. All right, so now I'm going to use background color and start to really look at the um, contour edge to get some of these little cutout. They almost always look like little triangles or little diamonds uh, for, for daisies, you know, chrysanthemums, these types of flowers. So a lot of times that first pass with the petal, uh, petal brush is not really going to do the trick. And now I'm going to come back to that front center flower again and really put more love and care and attention onto it. So I'm using some alizarin and some white and just looking for which ones have more uh, more light and color. 
there more light basically okay and then in the very center of this one over here almost goes to like a lilac color these petals are kind of folded over in the center and so I want to start the stroke at the end of the petal rather than on the inside I'm going to start it on the end of the petal and then lift off and then we kind of need a variety of sizes so I'll turn my brush you know, this way and I want to think about how those petals are curving around that center axis um, to get the perspective. Okay. I see one more eucalyptus. That's a great layering eucalyptus leaf here. In between, need a little more green into that. I feel like this at the very tip should go a little bit darker. So, you know, make the eye look where you want it to look, aiming for contrast. So if it's a dark edge up at the top and then you can just kind of walk it off into the center, great. I wish we had something kind of over here. This feels a little, a little empty. Oh, I guess that's why I had put in the, uh, the, the leaves over here yet. Circling. These little guys. So with the palette knife, going to kind of get that stem started there. And look for these two major leaves here. And then just to really make those pop more, get in some stronger cast shadow underneath. We've got some deeper, deeper greens. I'm going to grab some blue and black again with some cadmium for some of these darker value greens that are in the cast shadow. Yeah, I think this is bringing a little bit more balance to the picture here. Be careful not to make all of these super bright and paint every single one. Make sure you've got a few different varieties and saturations of greens. So the last thing you want to have happen is have a whole bunch of polka dotted things just take over your entire picture, you know. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, that's never a good thing. You know, you do all this work and then, and then with those little polka dots, you just go to town and it's like all of a sudden they've just dominated the whole picture and we've got to put them in their place. Keep them in their place. 